Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be rebuilding Benfica using a very good 4-1-2-3. Now this tactic is a ton of fun to use and it was nice to use a tactic that's not a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. So if you guys do want to stick around to the tactic then do watch the end of the video where I break it down but please do stick around and see how this rebuild went because trust me we brought in some fantastic players and potentially brought in I think some of the best free players we're ever going to bring in across any of these rebuilds. So, when you take on the challenge with Benfica, to be honest, it's one of them challenges. The goal of this, by the way, is to rebuild their squad. They have got quite a few older players that we do want to eventually get rid of and bring in some younger talent to take over these players. The likes of Otamendi is a name that does, obviously, is one of the main people. Um, but the aim is to make them dominant in Portugal again. Winning at back-to-back -back minimum is going to be the aim. And if we can, try and find some type of European success, whether that be the Conference League, Europa League, or Champions League, ideally the Champions League. Luckily for us, the club is quite good in the sense of reputation, training facilities, youth facilities, and youth recruitment. The owner loves the club. The finances are okay. In the first season, we're not going to be making any signings purely because we only got given £2 million. So we're not going to tweak anything in terms of bringing players in or even selling anyone in the first season. We're going to see what this club can offer us and hopefully the players turn up and we can just build, see where the weaknesses are and build from there. Now, I mentioned previously, we are going to be using this formation. I'll, I'll show you like the actual tactic screen later on in the video, but... This is a very good picture because it tells us exactly what we've got to work with at the moment. And I love this screen. I love how they made this. It's a quality, quality feature. So in goal is a bit of a weakness. I'm going to be honest. We have got three goalkeepers, but the best ability we have is two and a half stars. Now, obviously this season, we can't afford to go out and get a new one. So we are going to stick with what we have, whatever, however much I slate it. We are going to play one season with these players. Left back is quite good, to be honest. We've got Grimaldo, who I'm a big fan of, and Ristich, who is decent backup. Obviously, as you're going to notice as I go on here, there are a lot of players that are going to get mentioned twice, and that's purely because they can cover multiple positions. Two centre-backs then. Um, I'll just go over the ones we do have. We've got Otamendi, Vermisso, who I'm a big fan of, and Morato, who himself is actually quite good. But again, definitely could look to add to that position. Otamendi will need to be replaced. He is 34, so he's probably got another year in him, another two years tops. At right back, we've got Gilberto, Barr, and Jao Victor. So quite good depth again. Obviously, you could always argue you can improve, and you can. But overall, the defense isn't horrific. It will definitely get us through this season. It's just next season, we definitely will need to add to it, just so we've got a little bit more depth, especially in the centre-back position. We then go over to what is going to be one of the defensive midfield the roles and we're pretty much blessed in this we've got Enzo Fernandez one of the most sought after midfield players in the world at the moment so it's all about trying to keep him to be honest so we'll definitely be giving him a contract as soon as I can we've got Arsenas Arsenas I don't have to say that I really don't have to say that name I don't want to butcher it and Luis. Again, that is a position which I would like to have on my own little impact on, little tweak here and there, just so I can bring in my own player and sort of, you know, use people that I know can work. But the main player always is going to be Enzo Fernandez. We then go to what is going to be a wise playmaker, something I rarely use but worked really well in this rebuild. And that's going to be Neres Grimaldo, who obviously I'm not going to play there because he's our left back, and Ristich, again, who is a very attacking sort of fullback. So mainly Neres is going to be playing there and that is completely fine in the box to box again we've got Jao Maru who can play involved now as well and obviously two of the bit on people we previously mentioned including Fernandez so Fernandez has got a couple of opportunities here to play a deeper role and also in the box to box the shadow striker we've got the likes of Jao Mario Fernandez can play there as well Rafa really good players there obviously Rafa's another player who is really good but he's easily 30 so i mean he's going to be he's going to have to be replaced at some point on the right hand side we actually have neres rafa and obviously draxler who i don't think is here permanently i'm um, not too keen on draxler anyway but again as you can see neres is not as comfortable on this side compared to the left so we're going to try and put him depending on where the best you know when we feel we're by the best 11 because that is what we'll end up playing because obviously these are some um, holiday simulated and to finish it off up top i'm quite confident we've got gonzal ramos who is sensational We've got Musa, who's good backup, and Araujo, who is also good backup. And this is what the team looks like in the actual tactic page. Now, obviously, I'm going to break this tactic down a lot more when we actually go into it. But for now, I'm going to read out the first 11, and we're going to go and simulate the first season. So the first season is going to consist of Ramos, Rafa, 
Merez, Mario, Weigel, who didn't even come up in that screen for some reason, Grimaldo, Otamendi, Vermisso, Gilberto, and Vlalas Sodomos. I believe that's how you say that. But let's go in anyway and simulate the first season and see how we do. So first simulation has been completed then, guys. And to be honest, it's actually gone very well. We've managed to win the Portuguese Premier League in the first season, which I would say would be doable, especially with this team, because it is very good. Um, with the likes of Ramos scoring 32, Enzo Fernandes with 19 assists. We will look more in depth in that. We've got the squad, um, um, squad stats screen sorry, on the next page. But 89 goals scored, 19 conceders. Definitely could be looking to a lot better in these Portuguese Cup and the Champions League. So the rebuild is far from done. Obviously, I want to make us clearly dominant in Portugal, meaning winning it back to back as a minimum is definitely a set goal. Going into the stats then, you're going to have Ramos with 32 goals, Rafa with 22, João Mario with 17, Araujo with 16, 14 for Neres, Fernandes actually coming in with eight. So we are seeing a lot of goals getting scored from multiple positions, which is Always a good thing to see, especially considering we've not even had our own, you know, twist on this team yet. We're using the players we do have, and they are good players, but it's quite good for us at the moment that this is working without even signing anyone. In terms of assists, in terms of assists, then we've got eight down here from Otamendi, which is a very strange person to get that amount of assists. 17 coming in for Grimaldo, quite expected, a very good left back. 19 coming in for Fernandez. I don't doubt in one bit. 17 for Neres. 12 for Mario, 11 for Rafa, and 3 coming in for Gonçal Ramos. So, or Gon Gon Cal Ramos, sorry, don't want to offend anyone. But overall, a very, very good season, and it gets better, because we have been given £32 million to spend going in to what is going to be the second transfer window, although we made no signings in the first one. We still have had the opportunity, but this one we are going to make signings, so... I'm going to go and make some sign-ins, see where we need to strengthen, probably that back line a little bit, just bring in a little bit more depth. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. Now, we've been a little bit busy in the transfer window. We've not obviously got tons and tons of money, and it is still quite hard to attract players to this club because we haven't had that European dominance or even that one sort of bright spell. We have offloaded some players on the free and also some we have just decided to sell due to the fact they wanted to leave or the fact they wanted to move them on. Unfortunately, Otamendi, we couldn't sell because his, his wage bill is an absolute joke and no one's willing to offer it. So wrist stitch goes. Um, also some of these players, which I'll let you read because we're on about the players who were brought in. We've done a good bit of business on Reese Nelson, by the way, who we brought in on the free, which in my opinion is a fantastic signing on the free. You can't really go wrong. We signed Lodi from Atletico Madrid for 18 and a half million, which again, I think is a great price. Thiago Santos, who is one for the future. We'll say that. You'll see that in a moment. And Josip Satalo from Dynamo for 12.7 million. So the first play is Lodi. I got him because he's an experienced left back. I'm um, obviously Ristich does go as well. This guy's got tons of experience at the age of 25. He's played for some good teams. Obviously, you know, when I say that the main one I'm looking at is Atletico. A little bit of time in the Prem. Obviously, that was, I believe, a loan, possibly, because I, I signed him from Atletico. Um, but he's got good attributes. He didn't cost too much. And I think he's if he doesn't even start over Grimaldo, he's a fantastic left-back to have to bring on as a substitute or when there's an injury. We then go over to Reese Nelson, who obviously was on the free. Again, playing for some good clubs. Hoffenheim, Feyenoord, obviously Arsenal. And we've got him on the free. He's got some decent attributes, just does need to grow a little bit but for this league i'm sure he can light it up and he's only 23 so he's still got tons of years to actually grow as a player he can play in several positions so he's a perfect option for us especially on the free this guy's one for the future um i picked him up because he was ridiculously cheap he's already got really good attributes to be honest for his age 16 acceleration 16 pace 15 tackling is he going to get in the first team? No. Is he even going to make the substitutes? He might not. But it's one player we can sort of keep at the club, develop him as one of our own, and eventually, hopefully in this rebuild, he can come and be a part of the first team. And the last player is an absolute bargain, in my opinion. I've never signed this guy, but he looks absolutely incredible. 23 years of age, already a leading Premier League player, and he could improve slightly. 16 tackling, not the most rapid compared to some of the centre-backs you can sign, but definitely would do a job in this team and 100% should make this starting 11.
Oh, of simulate, or sorry, I've actually put this as filtered by the best 11, and he doesn't make the start on 11, which does surprise me. But having looking at it, Vermicio and also Murato are sort of the same star, but this guy will get game time, so do not worry, I'll make sure of it. But it's, it's very basically, it's pretty much the same lineup then, um, except we've got Luis stepping in that anchor role. We've got the same keeper, we've got Barr at right back, Vermicio and Murato, the centre backs, Grimaldo, Luis Fernandez, João Mario as the wide playmaker, Rafa Neres, and Gonçal Ramos. So that is going to be the team for the second season. A little bit gutted that a few of them signings didn't get in, but they will get game time. Obviously, I don't, when you do the holiday test, and I don't, I say use current match tactics, obviously, but I don't say use the current team because then everyone gets a little look in. So hopefully we can see how all of the signings do do after this simulation. So let's get in and simulate the second season. So guys, it's actually a back-to-back -back title win then. We have won the Portuguese League very comfortably. We've also won the Portuguese Cup, the Portuguese Super Cup, and the Portuguese League Cup, and obviously the League. So that is a quadruple winning season with 86 goals scored and 27 conceded. Now, I will say I still want to improve. I want to go above and beyond for this club. Champions League is, is, is what we're going to try and go for because I know I said at the start of the video, Obviously, we could win Europa League, that would count. Conference League, that would count. But realistically, we're not going to fall out of the top four. We seem to be ace in the league right now. So we are going to try and at least get to the finals of the Champions League because these round of 16s at the moment, I can't complain. PSG, we're not going to beat right now. But I do believe with a few more transfer windows, we definitely can. But in terms of the stats then for these players, we're going to have Ramos, 32 goals. Rafa with 31 14 for Reese Nelson, a great first season for him. Do take that in, a fantastic first season. 13 for Araujo, 10 coming in for Neres, João Mario with nine, then it does drop off a little bit. In terms of assists, we've got nine coming in here for Grimaldo. We've got 21 for Fernandes, what a player. Seven coming in for Neres, 21 for Reese Nelson. Honestly, this guy, trust me, in FM, He's absolutely sensational in my opinion. Such a big fan of this guy. I really am. We then go to 10 assists for Rafa. And then there is obviously a little bit more here and there from other players. Not going to read out every single one, but a familiar pattern we're seeing is how every player is getting, or a lot of players, not every player. A lot of players are getting involved scoring the goals. Obviously, the dominant ones are Rafa and Ramos, as you would expect. But it gets better and better, guys, because we have now been given £35 million to strengthen this team. Obviously, the finances are very, very secure at this club now. And I do believe with this type of money, we can really bolster this team. And hopefully, we can see slow but steady progress in the Champions League. So let's get into the third transfer window and see who we can attract. So then, guys, this is going to be the transfer window. And it has been busy. Players going out, players coming in. Let's just say that. But please do admire the free transfers we have got already, which we are going to talk more about. That deserves a like. I know that. I'm a little goal, by the way. Let's try and smash 30 likes on this one. But let's go in. So we actually offloaded Frederick. I'm not going to butcher the name. To Ajax to 54 million. Now, this was not all up front. Around 30 of it was up front. The rest was in add-ons after the season. We also sell um, Gilberto to Ajax for 9.7 million. Um, Araujo to Bologna for 1.5. And Chiquinho um, for 3.1. So that bolstered what we had as a budget, hence why we could afford to spend a little bit more than what we got given. So we're going to start off then with Pulisic, a fantastic player, especially when he's coming on the free from Chelsea. Obviously, Diallo from PSG on the free as well. Now, I didn't really need another centre-back, being honest, in this window, but a player like him on the free, I'm just going to take because I'm sure he will get game time. And even if he doesn't, I can look to sell him next season. So sometimes it is smart just to get these players, see if they actually fit fit in, get game time. If they don't, easy money, easy profit. That's just the way of football manager, guys. We then go over to Ajax, and obviously we sold to them with two players, so I went and took one of theirs. That is going to be Kudus from Ajax for £26.5 million. We then go over to Lille and sign Lafont, finally getting a goalkeeper for £16.7 million. And finally, Baku from PSG for £19.5 million. Now, the first player is Pulisic, a fantastic, fantastic freebie. Again, three-star ability, a leading Premier League player. <clears throat> Already has got the potential to become a star Premier League player, should I say. Fantastic attributes on him all round, really. Good acceleration, good agility, good pace, good anticipation, good flair. 
average shooting but decent for a winger to be honest with you and hopefully this guy will get a lot of game time on that left hand side we then go over to Diallo again a player that isn't one of the best center backs currently in this save but will do a job especially on the free decent attributes to be fair to him um 15 tacklings the main one that does come into into mind and be a perfect option for them you know up games etc etc we then go over to kudos and i thought you know what rafa is getting on i need to have another shadow striker who can obviously hopefully replace him and he has got quite some he's got some big boots to fill but if anyone can do it it's going to be mohammed kudos a fantastic player i'm um, obviously only 23 years of age already a leading premier league player he is close to full potential but to be honest four star is more than enough for this team fantastic dribbling good finishing good acceleration decent pace and just a very tricky player to defend against and a ton of potential we then go over and get Lafont, which obviously is a must needed signing we needed a goalkeeper quite desperately now to be fair and this one is an improvement three and a half star ability um probably is going to stay that possibly get to four but he could get to four. He was only 25 but this keeper's as solid as they come and for that price tag you can't really complain we then go over to a right back, obviously offloading a right back. We did need to bring a new one in, and that is going to be Baku from PSG, previously of Wolfsburg and Mainz. Again, 26 years of age, already a leading Premier League player. He is also close to his full potential, but this guy is probably the best right back in this division now, so more than enough, and this guy's good enough to win these big competitions with. Very rapid, good natural fitness, good off the ball, good determination, good teamwork, good work rate. Tackling possibly could do with a little bit of improvement, but definitely will be enough for this division. And this is how the team looks now, guys. So we are seeing a few new faces in this start on 11. We've got Lafont, Baku, Silva, Morato, Grimaldo, Luis, Fernandez, Pulisic, Kudus, Rafa and Ramos. So... A lot of them players getting into the team instantly, which is really good to see. We can see Reese Nelson on the bench, Lodi, Neres, um, João Mario, Weigl still here, Diallo, um, João Victor. And we have got a really good looking team now. A lot of depth in the team. And be very surprised if we can't carry on within the title at least. But hopefully we can simulate this third season now. And I'll come back to you with some progress in the Champions League. Guys, unfortunately, I can't come back with the news I wanted. We got to the round of 16 again. We seem to be getting really done over with the teams we're getting. Bayern Munich, obviously, Champions League giants, which is not ready. I believe two more transfer windows is what we need. And hopefully we can really see us get into the last stages of that competition. However, it's not all negatives. We did win the Premier League again. We also won the Portuguese Super Cup and the League Cup. <clears throat> doing that by scoring 94 goals and only conceding 16. So things are definitely still on the up. I mean, we've got Ramos with 40 goals, Kudas getting the highest match rate on average, and Pulisic with 17 assists in his first season. So, I mean, things are still looking good. It's just offset very high standards at this club. I really want to try and at least get to that Champions League final because I think we're only this close away from doing it now. In terms of actual stats then, overall, we've got 40 goals for Goncal Ramos, Kudas with 28, Enzo Fernandez with 14, 13 for Pulisic, 11 for Rafa, 4 coming in for Antonio Silva, then there is a little bit of a drop-off. Quite a disappointing season for, where is he, um, Reese Nelson, who I believe must have had an injury or something because I can't even see him on the screen, unless I'm being blind. Could be down the bottom, but I didn't see him there. So no idea what's happened to Reese Nelson. I will look into that. Um, but yeah, that, that's an interesting one. Anyway, anyway, in terms of assists, then seven for Gonzalo Ramos, Kudus with 16, 13 for Enzo Fernandez, 17 for Pulisic, and 11 for Rafa. Also eight down here from Lodi and six coming in for Baku. So overall, again, still good to see that we've got a mixture of goal scorers and Goncal Ramos is really developing as he should be. But Going to the next season, this is the biggest budget we've been given so far. We've been given £42.6 million to spend, and I am really excited to see who we can who we can sort of get with this. I'm hoping we don't have to sell you sell any other big players and no one else wants to leave because I'm happy with who we've got now, and I'm hoping that we can just carry on in you know getting more players in instead of replacing. So let's get into the next transfer window and see who we can bring in. So guys, what actually happened to Reese Nelson? He was down the bottom. Um, I went back and looked, and he is still at the club. He's just not. He didn't have a good season. He was injured for four months. He 
I'm gonna be, I don't want to say it because I know I hyped him up a lot. He got a golden assist the whole season. I'm gonna be honest. He obviously wasn't playing as much, but that's out the window. Let's move on. We're gonna go over to this transfer window, and we have moved incredibly well again with three transfers, bringing in Tanky and Dombele and Dominic Calvert Lewin on the three. We go and we sign Valentin Gomez for £11.2 million, Lucas Gorna Duarte from Salzburg for £9.2 million, Malasia from Manchester United for £17 million, and Adam Holzek from Bayer Leverkusen for £32 million. Now, Ndombele, similar to Diallo, possibly don't need him, but he's okay. His, his average has got decent overall attributes. He does a little bit of everything and nothing world-class, if that makes sense. He's just a handy player to have to obviously rely on if injuries occur and play in the smaller competitions. And on the free, you know, it is a 20, pound, 20 million pound player on the free, so you can't really go wrong. This guy, I mean... It's poor business from Everton because they let his contract run up. They didn't look to sell him and we've come in, give him an offer. He couldn't refuse and it is a bit of a tricky one because obviously we've got Ramos. So I don't really want to play Ramos in another position. I don't want to bench him. So Albert Lewin is going to be back up, which is a little bit of a killer. Um, but at the end of the day, it is amazing backup to have and possibly... You know, there could be games where Ramos isn't scoring. We can bring someone like Calvert Lewin on, completely different style of striker, catch your position off guard, and you can't complain. I'm not going to be told this is a bad sign, and even though he's 28, he's worth like £40 million. Fantastic finishing, pretty rapid as well for someone of his height. Great strength, three star ability. You really can't go wrong. We then go and sign Valentin Gomez, a centre half with quite a bit of potential on him. Good tackling, not the quickest again, but I do see a lot of potential in this guy. He's only 22 years of age. And again, it's all about just future-proofing ourselves, guys. Future-proof, future-proof, future-proof. Get loads of young players through the door. Hopefully, they develop as we go along. So far, so good with the players that we have brought in. And hopefully, this guy can add to that list. We then go and we sign. Make sure I didn't skip anyone. We didn't. This guy. And we signed this guy because I got scouted him. I, I'm not going to pretend I know this guy because I literally don't know too much about him. But... He looks incredible, quite rapid, good stamina, good strength, good concentration, good teamwork, good vision, good positioning, good tackling, just a little bit of everything. He's only 21 years of age and potentially could get to like a four star in that midfield. He can play, as you can see here, a se selection of roles in the midfield. And again, it is sort of like a 40 million pound player for a fraction of the price. So again, I, I can't stress this enough. When you, when you do your saves, guys, Salzburg are always a team to check because they have some fantastic players and you can always get players for <laughs> next to nothing, to be honest, because by the time you've offered them a contract, they want to leave the club and they sort of get forced into selling them. It's not nice, but it's business at the end of the day. We then go and we sign Malasia. Now, this guy is a bit of a risky one. My United side come out, all right? I wanted to get Malasia in the club. I wanted another left back and this is the guy I went for. Um, to be fair, though, he has got good attributes on him. The, the stars do worry me. Two and a half star does worry me, but it's only close to his full potential. So he could go up to a three, which is currently what we've, what we've got anyway. So I'm not too fast if that is all he goes to, because that will be more than enough anyway. But I do think this is a good option. He provides something a little bit more different. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, quite quick as well. Good work rate on him. Good bravery. And I just thought, why not, you know? He might not start every single game, but it's a good option to have and a good player to have in the club. We then go and we sign Adam Holzek. Now, this guy is mainly to cover. I got him mainly, to be honest, not to replace anyone individually. But it was more the fact that he can play pretty much every position up front. And he's obviously a very good player when it comes to potential. He can get up to a four star. Already got some decent attributes on him quite quick. 15 finishing, good amount of flair on him. And he's just a very versatile player that can cover several positions. And I thought it would be a great signing to have in the team. But we have got to quickly say, because I forgot to say this, and you might be wondering why I went and signed the likes of Malasia, for an example. This actually come up at the bottom of this one. So Lodi wanted to go. I couldn't refuse him. He wanted to go to Manchester City, but we did get £52 million for him. So a great bit of business from my end, in my opinion. So that is why Malasia did have to come in. I didn't just fancy having three left backs. That is why we were sort of forced into signing a left back at quite an urgent and a very quick decision. But 
This is going to be the team going into the next season. Um, don't worry, Calvert-Lewin won't be playing. I am going to make sure Ramos does start, and I will tell them to use the team I select. But this is the best 11 filtered. So we're going to have Lafont, Baku, Silva, Morato, Grimaldo, Dwarf in the anchor roll right away, Fernandez, Pulisic, Kulis, Rafa, and Calvert-Lewin. So let's get into this next season, and hopefully we can see a little bit of success in the Europa League. Europa League? Europa competitions. Europa competitions? European competitions. Third time lucky. Well, guys, it has finally happened. We have managed to win the Champions League. Now, I do think it was a mixture of, obviously, we were slowly building a team bit by bit, but that last transfer window, we really did push hard. And, uh, you know, the addition of Calvert-Lewin especially can really help out just him alone. But the rest of the players we brought in obviously was the trick. Now, it wasn't just that we won. We also won the Portuguese Premier League, the Portuguese Cup, the Portuguese League Cup, and the Super Cup, scoring 99 goals and only conceding 16 goals. Now, I've got to say again, Goncal Ramos has been absolutely sensational from the start of this save, and he finishes with 46 goals in this season. Kudus again getting the highest average match rating, and Rafa coming in with 23 assists. And to be honest, which probably will be one of his last seasons due to his age but what a season that was guys to be fair i mean you can't really complain we've won everything that was available to us and i knew we could do it i knew we could win the champions league i didn't think it would be this season i'm gonna be honest i already had in my head some players that i wanted to bring in after this season to sort of make sure we could win it but that is going to be the rebuild done guys obviously we've got a lot more to show you from this we're going to start off by seeing what the finances are like so we would have had 30 million to spend in the next transfer window if we were going to do it, which again is quite impressive to be fair. The data hub then, we always like to have a quick look. Team attacking, 2.91 goals per game with a 91% pass completion. Very impressive. And 0.47, so the defence, really solid. That could have even been the versatility we have at the back now. So overall, very happy with how this has gone. I mean, I'm pretty sure there is a way to do this. If possibly go on to club info, history then is it going to be the likes of landmarks here we go and we can go to competitions and we can see so we've won that's runners up champions there in 2023 the portuguese premier league super cup league cup premier league champions again cup super cup league cup premier league super cup and then obviously this is the big one the champions league winners in 2026 so that is going to be benfica rebuilt but now what we're going to do is we're actually going to break down and review do an overall review of the tactic that we used for this fantastic benfica rebuild well then guys this is going to be the tactic and again full credit to dhfm for the ff bulldozer 412 Three, four, one, two, three. I'm a big fan of that name, by the way. I will be leaving the link to the video. I believe there is one on the FM Scout page and also a link to the FM Scout tactic. But this was a ton of fun to you. So great job, bud. Great. You know, I just, it's unique. That's the one word I'm going to use because you got play. It might look a little bit weird on paper, but trust me, it works really well, as you've seen. And it's just nice to use something that's different other than the 433, you know or a 4 2 3 one. I want to quickly say now, guys, if you are enjoying this and you do like this sort of the way that I mold rebuilds into tactics in a video, then please do leave a like on the video, subscribe, and do comment on the rebuild you want to see next. Also, if you guys do want to send in your tactics, you can do that by following my Twitter and sending them across via there, or also my Instagram, which can also be found in the description. And I'd love to use your tactics, possibly feature them in a video, shout you out, etc., etc. But let's break down this tactic then. So we're going to start off. It's going to be a positive mentality in possession, fairly wide, play out of defense, slightly shorter, slightly higher tempo. Be more expressive and work ball into the box with mixed crosses. In transition, you have got counter press, slow pace down, distribute to the entire back line, full backs and centre backs. Out of possession, you've got a much higher defensive line, high press line of engagement, much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, trap outside and stop crosses. Now, if you are conceding an absolute ton of goals, um, possibly if you're playing in like the Premier League as like a mid-table side or a lower league side, I would recommend dropping that line a little bit. But obviously it's, it's worked well for us here and maybe that is what makes the tactic work so well. But just be careful of that. If you are conceding lots of goals, that could be quite an easy fix. 
Going over to the player roles then, we're going to start off with the deep lion forward on attack, roam from position, hold up ball, take more risks and move into channels. On the shadow striker, shoot less often, tackle harder, dribble more, take more risks, get further forwards and move into channels. On the winger on the right, dribble more, run wide with the ball, cross more often, cross from byline, get further forwards and stay wider. The wide playmaker on support, mark tighter, shoot less often, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often, sit narrower and roam from position. The box to box in the midfield, on support sorry, is take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, move into channels and roam from position. The anchor, the glue of the, the field is what I like to say, this guy done an absolute amazing job by the way. Shoot less often, dribble less, take more risks, take fewer risks, sorry, don't know, please listen to that again, take fewer risks and hold position. Left back, we have got a fullback on attack, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, cross more often, get further forwards. On the right back, we have got a wing back on support, take more risks, shoot less often, run wide with the ball, get further forwards. Two central defenders, both on defend, shoot less often, dribble less and hold position. And exactly the same for the other one. And that leaves one last position, the sweeper keeper on support pass it shorter and take more risks. But that is going to be this tactic broken down. Obviously the links are going to be in the description for a direct download and to see the video created on it. But, but a ton of fun. I really did enjoy rebuild, rebuilding, sorry, Benfica. Rebuilt a lot quicker than what I thought as well. But as always guys, if you have enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like on the video, comment what video you want to see next, and please do subscribe. It's completely free and it helps the channel grow. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.